So I'm Grant Miller and I'm the Staff Sergeant of the Calgary Police Service Homicide Unit. I have the following release for you today. The Calgary Police Service has charged three people in connection with the death of a local man. Ryan Lane, 24, was last seen in the early morning hours of Tuesday, February 7, 2012. Last week, we revealed that Lane's remains had been found and his death was declared a homicide. We believe Lane was lured to a location in the 5200 block of Country Hills Boulevard, Northwest. It is alleged Lane was kidnapped from that location and was later killed. It is also believed the murder was the result of a custody disagreement. Lane's remains were discovered during a search of a 13,000 acre area northwest of Bicycler in June of 2012. The search involved a large number of resources from the, Cal from the Calgary Search and Rescue volunteers, the Calgary Police Service Canine Unit, the Mountain Patrol Unit, the Hawk Unit, and the Calgary Fire Department. The cause of Lane's death has not been released at this time. On Wednesday, November 28, 2012, with the assistance of the RCMP, Timothy Rental was arrested in the Grand Prairie area. On Thursday, November 29, 2012, with the assistance of the RCMP, one man was taken into custody in Airdrie, and one woman was taken into custody in Crossfield. Wilhelm Clausen Rempel, 38 years of age of Airdrie, Sheena Cuthill, 26 years of age of Crossfield, and Timothy Mark Rempel, 27 of Crossfield, are each charged with one count of first degree murder. All three have been remanded into custody and will make their first court appearance on Thursday, December 6, 2012. This was an extensive investigation. We would like to thank all the government agencies who assisted. I'll take your questions now. What would be the cost involved in this kind of investigation? So this is a very large investigation. It involved uh, easily over more than 100 police officers at different times in the investigation. Uh, to that end, I think uh, our search of that, of the area of 13,000 acres that we searched, uh, was a vital component in uh, completing this investigation successfully, and the resources that went into that, uh, we can't thank you. Can you speak to a cost at all, though? Are we talking more than a million? In the I would say more than a million dollars, yes. So, in the, you know, scheme of things with the investigations we've dealt with, would have this been one of the more costly investigations? I would say it's one of the one of the more costly. It is, it is, uh, it is one of the, one of the larger ones. Yes, it is. Um, but the police service is dedicated to finding truth and bringing results to these types of situations. That's what we're mandated to do, and that's what our expectation is, and that's what we carry out. Is that frustrating when we didn't have to spend that much when cooperation could have eliminated that? Um, we can't predict the people that we come in contact with and what they're going to do. Uh, it's just our responsibility uh, to take care of it on. How long between when he was kidnapped and killed? Um, we believe that uh, Ryan Lake died shortly after he was uh, taken that day. So just a matter of hours then? Probably, yes. Less than 24, yes. Was, was she or Cuddle using both names? Can you clarify that? Some releases have her as Rempel, married to Tim Rempel. Were they legally married, do you know? So I believe her name to be Sheena Cuthill. Um, I believe that she is married to Tim Rempel. And Will Rempel is Tim's brother. Welcome. I think uh, information from our investigation led us to that area. Uh, the challenge became, uh, it was just, you know, the area was so large and we weren't able to narrow it down any more than than what we were in the end able to do. And that's why uh, the search and area for most homicide scenes now, um, we put up the yellow tape, and the time scene people are responsible for everything inside the yellow tape. Um, now we have Spell Cal Sarah to come out and search everything outside the yellow tape. Um, this has proven to be very effective and has helped us tremendously. In general, this is what we did in this in this instance and in this investigation. The problem was that the area that we asked in the search was over 13,000 square acres. And our search managers did a fantastic job of breaking that down into uh, areas that were suitable for the helicopter, other areas that were suitable for horses, dogs, um, the marine unit in the river. And in the end, uh, they accomplished uh, that tremendous task. Can you say when you actually found the remains at this point? I don't remember the exact date, but it was late June. Did the three accused have any ties to the area of Ty's security? 
Uh, yes, they did. Uh, they had a residence in that area for some time. As we've spoken about uh, the locations where the arrests were made, one was in Airdrie, one was in Crossfield. So it was in that uh, general area. At this point, are you at all able to speak to uh, another member of the operation that was involved? The tactics used in the investigation we will never speak to those issues. And can you speak to um, Sheena and Tim and whether or not they had dealings with police in the past? Do to police? Uh, I, I believe that Tim has an unrelated uh, history, uh, criminal history, but again, not necessarily related to this. Can you say any more now about the glucose that you found? So at the time, we were looking for a red truck and a red uh, Jeep. I say this family um, had carrying carry control of all the vehicles. And can you talk about the, the truck being found um, that had been sold to a scrap metal? Uh, um, we did locate the truck and we did locate it uh, in the area. area. Uh, and I'm, no, I'm not going to speak to the specifics of where exactly we found it. What sort of terrain was the uh, remain found in? Uh, it's uh, 13,000 acres um, of uh, uh, prairie land, I would say is the best description of that. How satisfying is it uh, so many months later to, to be able to come to, not necessarily a conclusion, but a step towards that? I think that uh, our investigative team has uh, spent a lot of time and energy on this investigation, and we're very happy with the results that we have today. Um, we await the court process. Uh, we work closely with the Crown Prosecutor's Office and, uh, and believe that they are uh, happy with where the investigation is at to this point. Uh, but again, nothing we do can bring Ryan, Ryan Lane back for his family. And, and that will hopefully we'll receive more, uh, I guess, comfort um, at the end of the court process. Can you go over the timeline and we put <coughs> What took so long after the remains were found at the end of the gym to charges being laid now today? During our search, we found uh, physical uh, evidence remains on the prairies almost on a daily basis. It was difficult to determine uh, what exactly uh, we were finding as it went along. And we sent, uh, in this part of that process, we sent exhibits uh, to the lab. And, um, the RCP crime lab. That process takes time, and we, uh, and that's why it took uh, as long as it did uh, for us to be in a position to be confident that uh, we had found the remains of Ryan Lane. I understand you're not speaking to the cause of death, but can you give us an idea whether or not that he was uh, yeah. dismembered after death? And again, uh, an excellent question, but, but no, I'm not going to speak to that now in his remains. How about uh, do you anticipate further charges? Uh, at this point, uh, all three are charged with first degree murder. Uh, we do anticipate, uh, we are speaking with the Crown about further charges. That's good. Those charges uh, right now are going to focus around uh, his abduction and kidnap. Um, we're not specifically sure uh, which charges we're going to lay right now. I anticipate uh, in the preliminary court process that these charges. So can you rule out indignity to a body or, or any of those? Uh, I can't rule out anything like that right now. So for the charges, but no further accused. That's good. That's good. So when the remains were found in June, was it made public that the uh, remains were found? Um, again, um, it wasn't at the time. We were finding things um, almost on a daily basis every day that we searched. And it, it took uh, expert analysis to determine exactly what we found. Can you speak to, um, obviously first degree speaks to Brian Bullard, but from an investigative standpoint, when you put all the pieces together, does this appear to be that? Uh, yes, it does. And again, first degree murder is uh, uh, a very serious charge. And we wanted to make sure we had the evidence in place to support that charge uh, before we went ahead with it. Again, our uh, uh, the Crown's office uh, provided uh, their knowledge and support of that as well, and that's why we sent the charges that we went with at this time. When the remains were found, uh, was the, the Lane family notified to have to or when you guys had held off for a little while until we knew the Again, when we found the remains, 
things that we didn't know exactly on that day what we had found. And that's why we had to go through the lab process. So what did you do? The family wasn't made aware until uh, recently, within the last, when I say recently, within the last, I'll say a few months. We have spoken with the family. Again, I think uh, these results bring some relief to them. Uh, but again, nothing we do can bring their son back. Um, we, we did find um, evidence of, um, of that. But again, that's kind of specific to our case. Has Timothy Rempel come back, come down here from Grand Prairie? was taken uh, into custody in the other night in Grand Prairie, and now is, he's in custody of the sheriffs. He takes his way back from Grand Prairie to Calgary. At this moment, I don't believe he's in Calgary yet, and I'm not sure when he's going to be getting here in the next few days. How did you know the victim was in custody? I think that um, it was, it was uh, a possibility that surfaced very early. Uh, we examined other possibilities. But uh, the evidence supporting that theory um, uh, kept uh, coming our way, and, uh, and in the end, we believe that's what this was about. So, for how many days were you guys finding evidence on a daily basis? Every day that we searched. So, we did not search uh, for two months straight. We couldn't generate the resources uh, that intensely. So, when our searches went out, most days we found something uh, that we felt uh, the need to uh, have further examined. After the date in June that you found something, did you find more evidence related to this later on as well? To what? To the late case? Like in the search area? Uh, no. The day that we, uh, that time, we were at that location for a few days. Uh, but after that, no, we didn't find it. So just one day? Yes. Um, I'm not going to speak to the specifics of the remains and, and uh, the mistake that we found. Was it a little girl? Or did you know what I guess my name is? Yes. Yes, it is. Do you know where it was? So, um, the, the daughter's in a safe place now. Thank you.